Hello everyone, it is Test Render here, and this time we are going to do a wet skin tutorial for Dust Studio and iRay. In this tutorial, I am using Genesis 8 female character with the iRay skin shader that I've created with uh, Skin Builder 8, but uh, this method should work with any Genesis 3 or 8 character, male or female, and any iRay skin shader. I am also using the wet skin effect texture pack that I created myself, and which you can download for free. I'll put a link in the description. And if you are wondering about my user interface, don't, there's nothing fancy here. Uh, I have just rearranged the stuff to my liking. I have moved some docs away and uh, brought some tabs here and there and changed uh, the stuff a little bit. And I highly recommend you do the same. Just uh, throw away the stuff that you don't want to see or you don't need and bring it back later if you need. You can pretty much change everything in Dust Studio user interface and you should, it makes life easier. So to get started, select your Genesis 8 female and navigate to Surfaces tab. And if you don't see Surfaces tab anywhere on your site, you can always open it from Window, Paints and Tabs and Surfaces. So put it on Editor mode, find your Genesis 8 female you see this little triangle in front of it, click that and a bunch of stuff appears and on the bottom there is surfaces, so click that triangle too. So now you have access to individual body parts here. Uh, above surfaces you see few of these what you could call pre-selectors, skin and skin lips and nails or nails. Select skin, so it selects you all the skin items from the list below. Now to add to that selection, press Ctrl and left click. Add lips and if you have genitals on your character, add that too. And if you have wings or tails or horns or something like that, add those two to the selection so we can work on them all at the same time. So the way this wet skin works is by layering different features from this uh, iRay skin shader on top of each other. And we start with glossy layered weight. Now some iRay skin shaders use Dulop specular weight for whatever and glossy, some use glossy layered weight and some use them both. But whatever there is we crank the glossy layered weight up to one as far as it goes. Then just to be sure we click this little triangle in front of it and select none. So there is absolutely no texture maps affecting this glossy layered weight from now on. Below that you can see a bunch of stuff that you can leave as it is. And then glossy reflectivity, it's by default 0 0.5. You can increase that up to 0 0.6, maybe even more. And then glossy roughness, bring it up to somewhere there. 0 0.2, 0 0.3. You can change it later if it doesn't look good. The idea here is to create a little oily sheen on the skin uh, below the drops and droplets we are going to add later. So next up is base thin film. Here we are going to add first uh, little droplets all over the skin. So crank that up to 500. It may sound crazy but it's actually only about half a millimeter. Below that we see a new slider appeared that's by default, uh, I think 1.5, so change that to 1.33, which is the index of refraction for water. 
Now on base thin film we're going to add our first texture map. So click that little triangle, click browse and find your way to wherever you saved the wet skin effect package or if you have other assets you are going to use here. For base thin film we're going to select wet skin effect base glossiness 2 from the files here. So next up is a slider called top code weight. We crank that up to 1. Top coat is often used to create kind of a layer of lacquer on top of wooden furniture or stuff like that. But here we are going to use it to create a lot of drips and droplets on the skin. First you should add a texture map on top coat weight. Then click that little triangle, browse and select the face. That's because we need to get uh, basic settings for all of these sliders first. And then we can change uh, arms map for arms and legs map for legs. So uh, start with face because there's ears, face and lips that need the same maps all the time. So that's there. That's great. Now you need to change the top coat layering mode to Fresnel. And you see a new slider appeared below here. And uh, that is top coat IOR and we are going to change that to also water's index of refraction 1.33. So next we see there's th also thin film for top coat. We can crank that up to about 700 and also remember to change top coat thin film IOR to 1.33. 33 is so difficult number to say for me for some reason. There's a th 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 th. Yeah, well, next. Top coat bump mode, make sure it's height map. And for top coat bump, select the same face map that we used already before. And crank top coat bump to about 2. And we're pretty much done. Now we need to change individual maps for arms. So select only arms, browse and pick your favorite for arms. And remember to change the map for all of the places where we are using it. And remember to change it for both top coat weight and top coat bump. Next, let me do the rest of the body parts here real quick. Okay, now there should be arms. Uh, textures for arms and torso textures for torso. So let's render it real quick here on the viewport and see what it looks like. <laughs> okay so something's out of place here uh, she looks like if she's been bathing in mineral oil and of, of course that's a very interesting idea and everything but uh, this is not the, what i wanted this to look like and i think i know what went wrong here so let's go back to surfaces and select skin and uh, lips and gens and I'm going to crank down the glossy layered weight. I think I made a mistake here that it's uh, it should be one. I think something like 0 0.25 should be okay-ish. 
let's let's put it to 0 0.25 and let's render it again and see how it comes out now now it looks much more what i had in mind when i started so one thing i should say about this uh, wet skin stuff and no matter how you try to do it with this method or something else it is very sensitive to the lighting uh, the amount of light uh, direction of light uh, what hdri you possibly use and uh, what objects there are around your figure and so on it all affects the end result so be prepared to change things every now and then and make sure you try the render before you actually commit to rendering the whole thing in insanely big resolution because you never know what comes out of it until you actually try it anyway i learned a lot doing this uh, video tutorial i hope you learned something too if you liked, leave a like. If you didn't like, give me a thumbs down. And leave a comment if you want to ask something, I try my best to answer. And in any case, have a good one.